This is a sad day for government. It's a very sad day for Illinois government. Governor Blagojevich has taken us to a truly new low. Governor Blagojevich has been arrested in the middle of what we can only describe as a political corruption crime spree. We acted to stop that crime spree. The most appalling conduct Governor Blagojevich engaged in, according to the complaint filed uh, today or unsealed today, is that he attempted to sell the Senate seat. The Senate seat he had the sole right under Illinois to appoint to replace President-elect Obama. Back eight weeks ago, we had the following environment. There was a known investigation of the Blagojevich administration that had been going on for years involving allegations of pay-to-play conduct and corruption. There had been a recent trial of an associate of Governor Blagojevich in which allegations were aired where people testified that Government Blagojevich was involved in corrupt conduct. And there was an Ethics in Government Act that was pending, that would go into effect January 1 of 2009, that would bar certain contributions from people doing business with the state of Illinois. You might have thought in that environment that pay-to-play would slow down. Um, the opposite happened. It sped up. Government Blagojevich and others we're working feverishly to get as much money from contractors, shaking them down pay to play before the end of the year. A month or so ago, a $1.8 billion tollway project was announced. And while that tollway project was being announced, Governor Bogoyevich was privately seeking to have a person benefiting from that contract raise $100,000 in contributions. If they don't perform, bleep them. That's a quote. And the word bleep was not the word he used. After that point, a bug was placed in the campaign offices of Governor Blagojevich, and a tap was placed on his home telephone. And that tap and that bug bore out what those allegations uh, were. I'll give you two examples set forth in the 76-page complaint. One involves Children's Memorial Hospital, a hospital that obviously takes care of children. At one point, the governor awarded funding, uh, reimbursement funding, to that hospital to the tune of $8 million. But he also indicated privately that what he wanted to get was a $50,000 personal contribution from the chief executive officer of that hospital. In the ensuing weeks, that contribution never came. And Governor Blagojevich was intercepted on the telephone, checking to see whether or not he could pull back the funding for Children's Memorial Hospital. In addition to the pay-to-play allegations, which are described in greater detail in the complaint, we also were surprised to learn of an extortionate attempt against the Chicago Tribune newspaper. The Chicago Tribu Tribune had not been kind to Governor Blagojevich, had written editorials that called for his impeachment, and Governor Blagojevich and defendant Jonathan ha John Harris, his chief of staff, schemed to send a message to the Chicago Tribune that if the Tribune company wanted to sell its ball field, Wrigley Field, in order to complete a business venture, the price of doing so was to fire certain editors, including one editor by name. In the governor words, governor's words, quote, fire all those bleeping people, get them the bleep out of there, and get us some editorial support, close quote, and the bleeps are not really bleeps. But the most cynical behavior in all this, the most appalling, is the fact that Governor Blagojevich tried to sell the appointment to the Senate seat vacated by President-elect Obama. The conduct would make Lincoln roll over in his grave. The governor's own words describing the Senate seat, quote, it's a bleeping valuable thing, thing you just don't give it away for nothing close quote another quote i've got this thing and it's bleeping golden and i'm just not giving it up for bleeping nothing i'm not going to do it and i can always use it i can parachute me there quote those are his words not our characterization other than with regard to the bleep i should make clear the complaint makes no allegations about the president-elect uh, uh, whatsoever his conduct this uh scheme this part of the scheme lost steam when the person that the governor thought was the president-elect's choice of senator uh, took herself out of the running. But after the deal never happened, this is the governor's reaction, quote, they're not willing to give me anything but appreciation. Bleep them, close quote. And again, the bleep is a redaction. And with that, I'd like to turn uh, the microphone over to Rob Grant, the special agent in charge. Today certainly is a new low for the state of Illinois. I got here four years ago. Uh, a lot of you were in the audience, asked me the question of whether or not Illinois is the most corrupt state in the United States. And I didn't answer that question, yes or no. And I can't answer that question today. I don't have 49 other states to compare it with. But I can tell you one thing. If it isn't the most corrupt state in the United States, it's certainly one hell of a competitor. 
Uh, this wiretap, I can tell you from the FBI agents that participated in this wiretap investigation, were thoroughly disgusted and revolted by what they heard. And I think even the most cynical agents in our office were shocked. We decided that this required unusual measures, and there were a lot of things going on that were imminent. There is an editor that they'd like fired from the Tribune, and I laid awake at night worrying whether I'd read in the paper in the morning that when there were layoffs, um, that we'd find out that that person was laid off. The complaint, the complaint lays out in, in there, in fact, that when there were layoffs, there were conversations to find out whether the editor who should have, they thought should be fired was fired, and he wasn't. And the governor was asking whether there'd be more layoffs. So we have a governor in this modern times, the only one who's looking for more layoffs. You take that, what's going on, and add it to the fact that we have a Senate seat that seemed to be, as recently as days ago, auctioned off um, to, the, you know, to the highest bidder for campaign contributions. And Governor Blagojevich's own words on the, on the tape or the bug that set forth in the complaint talked about selling this like a sports agent. So, so, I'm just, and so we stepped in for a number of reasons. Basically, as I said before, we're in the middle of a corruption crime spree and we wanted to stop it. Where is the line between cutting an oral political deal and selling the United States Senate? And I understand uh, we're not, you know, there's, there's politics and there's crime. And sometimes I think when people get in trouble, they try and blur those lines. We're not trying to criminalize people making um, political horse trades uh, on policies or, or that sort of thing. But it is criminal when people are doing it for their personal enrichment and they're doing it in a way that is, uh, uh, in this case, uh, um, clearly criminal. I'm not going to go beyond saying that just we, the conduct we think is appalling. And I'm not going to do a comparative to other cases, but I just think it's uh, very, very disturbing that we have these pay-to-play allegations going on for years. That they picked up steam after a conviction, they picked up steam after an ethics and uh, government act, and that it would go so far as, as to taint the process by which the governor and his inner circle of advisors were choosing someone to take a seat in the United States Senate to represent Illinois. As far as uh, how much, uh, whether or not there are people um, um, acting like a tough guy or not, I mean, I don't, I don't want to pre-try the case, but if you lean on someone and, and lead them to believe their bill is not getting signed unless they give you the money, um, that is what acting like a tough guy is. It's a crime. Yesterday when asking about the taping, okay. the governor said that he invoked the names Nixon and Watergate. I mean, isn't it essentially what the government did here under the authority of a wiretap court order? same thing? Didn't FBI agents have to break into the governor's office in order to plant these? And I'm not going to compare FBI agents enforcing the law, trying to stop a senator from auctioning off a Senate seat, or shutting $8 million out of a children's hospital from being pulled back, or stopping people for greasing the skids to get a bill, or get someone fired with Nixon. It just it doesn't fly. What we did was lawful.